Welcome back, Shaloners. Well, hot off the heels of Shawn Mendes' blessed 21st birthday, we've got another celeb birthday to celebrate, Kylie Jenner's. That's right, KJ turns 22 today. And as I'm like posting this, I'm sure there's like some extravagant celebrations. We know she's in Italy, like the Italian Riviera. She's chartered a yacht that some like despot criminal used to have and was seized by the feds. And the whole family is there, except for uh, Kendall and Caitlin, so her dad and her sister. Great job. Such a toxic family. We can talk about that a little bit later. Today, though, I want to talk about how to make your boyfriend more romantic. Because if you've been keeping an eye on Kylie's social medias, which 146 million of you do, uh, you'll see that Travis Scott, her beau, has been going like kind of above and beyond with like the ostentatious displays and the gifts. And why maybe that's not necessarily a good thing. I'll break it all down. But first, just want to remind you, if you have a love question of your own or want to talk to me privately, find me on the Instant Go app. My username is ShallonXO and click chat to get connected. Also follow me on Instagram where I let you guys connect with me, weigh in on the next video topics, and just generally like tag each other in memes all day. It's my favorite thing. And be sure to listen to my podcast, Girl on Top, out every week where I answer the best questions you guys submit to me over the course of the last week. So Kylie's birthday. Well, first of all, I want to talk about what I'm wearing because... The last video I did about Shawn Mendes, like I wore a shirt that was cleavagey, and some of you guys like fucking lost your mind. You're like, how dare you say you're not a boob girl? Look at you. Because I was always like pretty flat chested growing up. And even now my group of friends, we call ourselves the tit friends because they all have really big boobs and I'm like bringing up the rear. And it just pissed people off so much that maybe my boobs are bigger than you thought. So I decided to get them out again. Sorry. I'm also fat AF right now. If you're participating in my keto challenge, you know this. I have dropped five pounds though, so I'm excited. We're gonna do an update on that. But I went to Victoria's Secret to an event last night and they like re-measured me. I've always thought it was a 36B. They said I'm a 34D. D is in Dunkin' Donuts, because that's how I got here. This is fatness. But you know what? You gotta ride that till the wheels falls off until, I mean, basically the weight falls off and your boobs go back down. So moving on to Kylie. So Kylie on her social media was posting this video of Travis, like he covered her whole house in rose petals. Take a look at some of the still photos. I mean, is this just, and in the background of the video, she's like, it's not even my birthday. Really, Kylie? Because you've been talking about it for like three weeks because you released the birthday collection. Like I love when people are like, don't make a fuss. And it's like literally all they've been talking about. You're like, okay, are we going to play this game? So I saw this whole thing of Kylie and the flowers and I was just like, just this like flat, ugh. Because if you've watched my Kylie videos before, you know my thoughts on Travis Scott. They are not positive. But like together, like the stuff she posts of them looks so cute. And like, I want them to be that cute family. I'm obsessed with her daughter. Like I only ever feel like I want kids when I look at Kylie and Stormy because they just seem so happy and so cute. Mm, little, little squirrels. But I have just heard too many bad things about Travis. I've heard too many things about him cheating, about having girls with him on tour. He's a rapper. I mean, any celebrity is a cheater. You heard this phrase, a man is only as faithful as his options. How many options do you think a professional musician has? A lot, a lot. Kenny G is drowning in Pusetta. You know what I mean? So I've also heard that like Travis brought his side chick to the birthday dinner Kylie threw for him. I mean, that's a whole other level. So this whole flower petal display is like ugh, gross couples goals. But to me, it's a big red flag. It's red petals and a red flag of a fuck boy. Why? Because it just seems so purposefully public, you know, like, and maybe he does a million adorable things behind closed doors. I don't know. But the things he does for her just seem so over the top because he wants them to be public to like balance out his behind closed doors dirty behavior. You know what I mean? And this is something that like, not that Travis is abusive, absolutely not. I mean, we don't know, but I, that's not where I'm going with this. But like abusive guys will, will do this and just not even abusive, but manipulative people will do this. They'll do something so over the top as a way of um, creating guilt within you so that if you are like, you don't treat me right, you don't like, you're not faithful to me, you're not upholding your promises. They're like, look at what I did. Like they have like photos and evidence that make you feel bad and make you second guess where you're coming from. 
and that's gaslighting. That is textbook gaslighting, creating some sort of diversion to distract you from the truth. And sometimes those diversions are explosive arguments, freaking out and having a disproportionate reaction if you call them out on their bad behavior. Or sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes they're going to do something over the top in a positive way to keep your eyes off the ball, to keep you on a feeling of instability. It's like, well, he didn't speak to me for four days and now he's surprising me with like tickets to Hootie and the Blowfish reunion tour. Not Hootie and the Blowfish. I don't care if you don't speak to me for years. If you come with me with Hootie tickets, all is forgiven. But like, it keeps you questioning your own sanity and it keeps them in power because the person who is the most unpredictable has the power because they are viewed as being less invested and the person who cares less wins. You know what I mean? So I wonder if this is part and parcel of that behavior with Kylie and Travis. Hopefully not. But yeah, let's talk about how Kendall and Caitlin are just like not there and the rest of the family is like Scott and Sophia are there. <laughs> really? Like those two managed to like snag an invite and like your sister. I've always thought that Kendall and Kylie have a very weird dynamic. And like she has said before that like if she wasn't sisters with Kendall, she wouldn't be her friend. And I feel like they look down on each other. Well, I feel like Kendall looks down on Kylie and I feel like she's resentful of Kylie's popularity because in Kendall's mind, she was like born beautiful and she deserves these accolades like naturally. And Kylie is measurably like, not, maybe not more popular, maybe not more popular, but I mean, she's, come on, hard to compete with that. And so I just think there's a weird dynamic. I think they're all three of their dynamics with Caitlyn is also very muddled. You know, I've said this before that like Caitlyn's issues before she became Caitlyn, when she was Bruce, she was having her own identity crisis. And like that has got to influence your parenting. And some of you were like, you're transphobic. Literally the definition is questioning identity. I say they are questioning their identity. You, an idiot, are like, <gasps> maybe the internet's too complicated of a place for some people. Do you know what I mean? Does anyone have a ball of tinfoil that those people could play with? Seems more their speed. So I think that their dynamic is strained and difficult as so many family dynamics are, but when you add the layer of like how Bruce had to come to terms with her identity, you know, that's just another thing. That's another monkey wrench in the machine, you know? So I'm sure that was difficult, but you know, they seem to work through that like really well, like bravo. They should, they should honestly teach a class on like, like a therapy class, like how to come to terms with your parents' transition. That would be so useful in today's society. Right. But of course, let's not count the Kardashians do a lot of like socially beneficial things. No. But what I want to talk about is how we can make our boyfriends do these rose petal kind of things, right? Because let's just assume for a second, we're not in a perhaps toxic dynamic with a famous rapper who is the father of our child. Let's assume that we're just in a good old fashioned relationship and we want some good old fashioned romance. Like, I feel like in the past, romantic gestures were like de rigueur. You know, they were completely expected. It's what you did, the flowers, the candy, all those like, cheesy things and then they fell completely out of fashion like in the 80s it was like shoulder pads and power suits and cocaine and, blah, blah, blah. and women were like not supposed to want that you know so it's the pendulum swung way to the other side and now we're all kind of trying to find our way my brand is feminine feminism okay tm trademarked <laughs> but like that's what i want like i i am a bad bitch but I also want to be treated like a queen because I am. And that's what feminism is. It's knowing your worth and demanding your worth and demanding your respect, whether it's on a paycheck or whether it's a box of flowers, box of flower, box of chocolate, box of anything. Give me boxes of presents. So here's how you make a guy more romantic. You figure out your love language, right? And I've talked about love languages before, but I want to touch on a different aspect of it. So first of all, the love languages, there's five. Gifts, compliments, physical touch, acts of service and quality time, right? My love language, and when I say my love language, that means what I like, okay? And usually what we like is what we inherently tend to give. You know, like my love language, if I'm being honest, is like food, like I'm a feeder and that's how I show my appreciation. I bake, I cook, I invite people over, like that's my love language. So that is also, that's kind of like gifts and acts of service, but I love 
compliments and acts of service. Like those are my love languages. So I need a boy to like come over and fix the drain, you know, and then tell me that my boobs are really perky. I'm a happy girl. A physical touch, like, of course, who doesn't want to get laid? But like, I think a lot of guys, their love language is physical touch. That's why men have a lot of problems with long distance relationships. They need the physical constant reminder of a girlfriend like IRL. Women are much more cerebral and emotional. So we can survive on like texts, FaceTimes, the compliments and you know, the, the gestures, the quality emotional time. So in that kind of way. So figure out what it is you like. And one of you guys asked me a question the other day. You're like, you know, my love languages are gifts. And so, but when I buy gifts for guys, they either start to take advantage of me or they like resent it because I'm emasculating them. But like, I don't understand, like this is my love language, but that's the thing, it's yours, it's not theirs. So we have to look at what theirs is. Also, don't fucking buy gifts for guys. Don't buy gifts for guys, they get to run the world. Your present is the whipped cream bikini, it costs $3, okay? That's the gift you give them. It, unless it's like their birthday or Christmas, you don't just buy gifts for guys. All right, bold statement, hot take. They buy gifts for you. Cause you're right, it sets up a bad dynamic. So find out what his love language is. And this is like a fun conversation to have because it might not be what you think it is. Or if he doesn't know, or if you don't know, ask questions like, what was the best birthday you had? You know, or what was your favorite weekend we spent last year? And maybe it was like, oh, we went to that concert or something, quality time. Or maybe it was that day we just laid in bed all day and cuddled and had a bunch of sex physical touch. You know what I mean? Or that night you cooked me pasta, acts of service. So kind of get a sense of that. And then you share yours. Also be clear about what you want. Guys and hints don't go super well together. I remember when my boyfriend and I started dating, like I, one of my other friends had started dating someone too. And he brought her flowers. He brought my friend flowers and I turned to my boyfriend. I'm just like, <laughs> like gave him that look. He's like, do you like flowers? And I was like, every girl likes flowers. He's like, no, my ex-girlfriend hated them. She thought they were corny. Like she hated them. And I was like, oh, okay. That's why he's never brought me flowers. Like he's been conditioned to think that like, you know, this is like a very incendiary topic. Like, I don't know who's pissed about tulips, but some bitch out there was. So I was like, okay, look, I need flowers on special occasions. They anchor the occasion. If I don't get flowers on my birthday, anniversary, Valentine's Day, I don't care what else you do, it just won't feel the same. And tell them this, not at 11 p.m. on February 14th, not after you've already had dinner on your birthday. You gotta tell them this on a neutral day. August 10th, tell it today, neutral day. Be like, you know what? I know this is probably coming out of nowhere, but I need candy on, on special occasions. I need you to surprise me with things. They don't have to be big things. It doesn't have to be $500 to Red Lobster, but I just need little thoughtful surprises. Because all we can do in this life is identify our needs and communicate them clearly. Whether those needs are at a job, this is the salary I need and this, these are the duties I want. A friendship, I expect you to show up if we make plans. And certainly with a boyfriend, you know? It's all about boundaries. Boundaries are inclusive and they're exclusive as well, right? So when we do this, when we can set up like, this is what I need to be happy, boys want to hear that because women communicate to build relationships, men communicate to solve problems. So you're now giving them a solution to a problem they might not have even known they had. Do you know what I mean? So now that you're like giving them like a path, a formula to follow, now you're setting yourself up for success and give them some examples. And it's easy, it's easier to convey information if you do it through a story, through an allegory or a fable. And like, that's how I pass on wisdom to you guys. I hopefully, I try not to be like, and this and this and this. I'm like, look what I did. I'm so stupid. You know? And I'm like, tell one of my own tales of woe. So if you're like, oh my gosh, like Becca's boyfriend came over and like, he had like let himself in and he stocked her fridge with La Croix and bought her Brie and just like made dinner. And it was just like the most adorable thing ever. I would love, I would like geek if someone did that for me. You don't even have to say him. You don't even have to just, oh, it's so existential. Just so, it's just like a person in the world. <laughs> who, who would that be? The person who's dick I suck? I don't know. Who could that possibly, I don't know. And just plant those seeds and let him take it from there, you know? And you can add on to that, be like, cause you know, it's like after a hard day, just the idea that someone is like anticipating 
like anticipated her needs, knew that she would want soda water because she drinks it every day after work and like went and did that for her. That's so sweet. Like, you know how like whenever I come home, I'm like, I have to get my jammies on. I have to have my comfy socks. And if they're dirty, I'm going to freak out. Hint, that's bait. Take it, buddy. You might find that you come home to brand new pajamas, brand new fluffy socks, your favorite show queued up on Netflix, you know? But here's what you do if it doesn't go that way. Because like I said, all we can I do is identify and communicate, right? And then it's up to the other person to take the bait. And if they don't, they might just not want to, you know? Like they just might not care. When we encounter someone who's not romantic, I think like society has conditioned us to think that like, hey, whoa, that's above and beyond. You want like flowers and chocolate, roses are expensive, candy melts. <laughs> what romance actually is, is appreciation, the identification and anticipation of a woman's needs and thoughtfulness. And if you look at, like if you're using Valentine's Day, say, as the day to ameliorate and cancel out 364 days of bullshit, that's not gonna happen. First of all, the hole inside you that he has created of ignoring you, not anticipating your needs, not caring, not prioritizing you, the hole is so deep, there is not one single day on earth that could refill it. You know what I mean? Like that's that problem has been created and it's a deficit. And it shouldn't work like that anyway. It shouldn't be like nothing, 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 spike, nothing, nothing, nothing. And I wonder if that's how Travis Scott is. You know, I wonder if it's like bullshit, bullshit, $30,000 watch, bullshit, bullshit, 10 billion rose petals, back to the bullshit. You know, I wonder what his baseline is. And that's what you have to examine. You're like, is my need for them to do these romantic markers, whether it's the hallmark the sort of foundation things like the flowers and the chocolates and the candlelit dinners, is that symptomatic of a larger issue? Am I fixated on these things, the promposal, the whatever, because I'm not feeling fulfilled in the other categories of this relationship? And yes, I'm starting to drink. You ever have one of those days that you're just in a mood, in a mood, no reason. Everything's great. My boobs, I'm having a good tit day. My hair's shiny. And by the way, I will do a hair tutorial because you guys are like, it's shiny. I'll do one. But yeah, sometimes you're like, I just need a drink. So I am. Oh, yeah. Oh. oh. It tastes like forgiveness. It tastes like all my sins are being forgiven. I love it. No wonder Jesus made wine. Right on. So... If you're looking at these romantic things as a band-aid for the rest of your relationship, you're gonna be in for a disappointment because then you're gonna fixate on it and you're gonna seethe and seethe and seethe and seethe. And when he doesn't come through, or even if he does, it's not gonna matter because you're already so gassed up and that deficit is already so large, you don't fucking care. Or when you feel like you've had to tell them and demand it, like, I need you to take me out of my birthday. I don't like asking someone to give me a present. You know, I want them to want to do these things. And if the vibe you get back is they don't want to, they don't want to because they don't like you. I've been there. I have been there when I felt like I was like this romance parole officer, like do this, do this. And it's like, how, how fun is this? I don't have to ask my friends. To do, I mean, my friends surprise me with things. My friends take me out. My friends make me feel special. My family makes me feel special. Like waitresses at a restaurant make me feel special if it's my birthday. And I'm demanding this from my partner. And all that does is make them pull back, you know? And now you've set up not only a parent-child dynamic where you have one person demanding something from the other person. It's just a shitty way to live. It's a shitty way to live. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, whatever your needs are, they're not outrageous. If you need some romantic gestures, if you need him to just communicate to you about how he feels every once in a while, something gushy, doesn't have to be a Lord Byron poem, but it's gotta be something. That's not asking too much. And again, if you have that need, look around your relationship and ask, why is this need so sharp? Where, what is this tapping into in the rest of this relationship that I'm not getting? 
And honestly, even if you do get it, like in this moment, if he does the rose petal thing, how much is that going to fix? My, it, it might fix everything or it might not. And it could be th some people are simply not thoughtful. They're not romantic. They're not thoughtful. They're narcissists. They're just sort of flat. They're sort of numbed out and boring. That's also not something you have to put up with. Toxic people can love you very much. Chemistry is not compatibility, you know? And it could be that you simply want and require more. And that's okay. But I wanna know your thoughts on Kylie. I assume she's gonna be doing something over the top and ridiculous today on her birthday. I'll have a video on it. Do you guys think she's getting married? I don't know, it's wild. But I will be there to catch it all. I mean, not there, like, please, gross. I've gone enough weddings in my life. I wouldn't even go to Kylie Jenner's wedding. Like no more weddings for me for the rest of my life, including my own, unless Sean Mendes comes knocking. <laughs> Tell me what you guys think about romance. What has worked for you in terms of turning a guy around? What are your love languages and what is the most romantic thing someone has ever done for you? I need it to warm my cold reptilian heart that I'm icing down with champagne. And like I said, if you have a love question of your own, find me on the Instant Go app and be sure to follow me on Instagram and weigh in on my latest or next video topic and listen to my podcast, Girl on Top. See you later, guys.